In 1982, the late Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, and President Reagan agreed to promote a cultural exchange between our two countries. The result of that agreement is being seen this year in the Festival of India, a series of events and exhibits throughout the United States. As part of the festival, audiences on the University of Iowa campus were recently treated to a special performance of Odissi, a form of classical Indian dance. The geographical region we know as the Republic of India possesses one of the oldest and richest of classical dance traditions, dating back at least 2,000 years. Out of a vast and prolific vocabulary of dance styles, less than a dozen are considered to be classical. One of these, called the Odissi, embodies postures akin to those of sculptures on Hindu temples in the eastern state of Orissa. Sharon Lowen, an accomplished Odissi dancer, carries this tradition into the present with her faithful interpretations of this timeless art form. Well, I grew up in Detroit, and I was very involved in performing arts. Um, I did a lot of dance, puppetry, drama. I took modern dance since I was six or seven and ballet since I was seven or eight. I was very fortunate to see a great deal of dance and theater and various performing arts, not only from the West, but also from Asia, Africa, Russia, in Detroit. And so it was all exciting to me, and I always came out of the theater dancing whatever I'd just seen. We had some close Indian friends. I knew a little bit about India through high school. And when I went to University of Michigan, I created my own major, which allowed me to do humanities, fine arts, and Indian studies. While I was working on my master's degree in dance, I received a Fulbright to go to India and went in 73, just after I finished my master's at Michigan. And at the end of nine months, I felt that I had wasted the time unless I stayed on. You imagine someone coming and studying ballet technique for nine months. Expression is very important in Indian dance. And in Odissi, one connects with the audience. Double. Eat tea. This is the Indian art. This is my uh, um, state, the Odisha. This dance Uriya. is an Indian art form from the state uh, of Orissa. I am an Orian. It was done originally only in temples. It was a temple dance done by the Maharis, which is the name of a caste in Hindu society. They are also called Devadasis. Later, boys were taught this style of dancing. There are only five parts in this dance. Five parts. The Mangalacharan, then Bhattu and Pallavi, then Abhine Bhava, last part, the Mukhya. As a form of religious worship is its primary focus, its origin, because it evolved out of a spiritual consciousness. It was performed in the temples as a devotion and an entertainment for the gods. The, uh, the repertoire began with an invocation and then a pure dance in honor of the God and then a, a very pleasant, lighthearted uh, uh, theme and variation of the dance technique and then dramatic expression and then a, a culmination and release, the climax of the dance. That was the traditional repertoire in the temple. The uh, rhythm is very important. It's very intricate. It's very involved. Um, in the West, music uh, harmony is very important, whereas in India and Africa, the rhythm is very strong, very richly developed and very intricate. And it's also somewhat improvisational, like jazz. So the rhythm is important, and the dancer will step or stamp on every beat of the music, and that'll be quite clear and very precise. And then on top of that, uh, one will add on torso movements, arms, eyes, neck, head, uh, gestures. And Namami, greetings. Vignaraja, turn out your left leg. Twum, you. Under the tree, here's the trunk and the branches. Now, bring this foot around and show his mother, Uma. 
Uma is very proud. So we step to the side, bring this foot up, Mahapada, and we show him resting on her knee. He's a very handsome boy. Then, into choke, out, with a very great presence. He's very impressive. Then after that, we show his elephant ear and his tusks. This is the Simha Mukha, thumb to the second two fingers. My teacher's training was, uh, I would say that there were two aspects. One is that you watched him. You watched him, rather than looking in a mirror and rather than doing exercises, looked at his face and tried to copy what he did. But he felt and taught that one should feel the dance, feel the expression. And so rather than it just being, uh, you know, just something that you lift your eyebrows and you move your face some way, you have, to, you have to internalize it. What is it? Why are you here? And then you have to feel it and then it'll come out. Many uh, students are training beautiful dance also. I have now, trained many great Odissi dancers, more than a hundred. And now I am here in America with my student Sharon Lowen. I am coming dancing with the Sadan. She is a very good dancer, but her training is not finished. Very good dancer. Now, just like learning. In fact, I myself am constantly learning and continuing my training. And now my I am more teaching and more experience increase the beauty of my own dancing. The dance. Not uh, my training, not finished. 